since my last botting Nike sneakers video, a few things has changed with the way BNB worked. So today I'll go over some of the changes in better Nike bot so that you can run your bot properly on Nike sneakers. So first, let's talk about the effectiveness of the bot. As of late last year, around the middle of November, Nike has been able to successfully filter out bot entries which made sneaker botting extremely inconsistent. For more information on how entries work, please watch part 1 of this video, which will be linked in the description. There, I talk a little bit more about how the Nike sneakers platform works, and knowing that is quite important in my opinion whether or not you decide to bot on the platform. Anyways, Nike has put up several botting countermeasures, but the biggest obstacle that bot developers are facing is the entry filtering. What this means is that Nike is aware of which entries are made normally by regular people and which entries are made using a bot. Therefore, recently, there has been very little success when it comes to purchasing hype limited sneakers using Nike bots. When thousands of people are running the same bot and not a single person is able to check out, then obviously it's a problem on the bot's end. The way I understand it works at the moment from my observation is that Nike picks and chooses which products to apply the bot filtering to. For example, for the Nike SB Dunk Ray Guns, a number of people had decent success on the toddler version using better Nike bot. But not a single person was able to check out the adult pair, as far as I know. It doesn't matter how you jig it, how many unique profiles you use, how many unique addresses, what proxies, etc. These factors are obviously very important when it comes to botting Nike, but if the bot entry filtering is turned on for the product, then you won't be able to check out with the bot as of right now. Simple as that. At the end of the day, the majority of people that purchase bots in general buy the bots as investments to make a return on that investment. In the bot's current state, this might take a lot of time to do more so than usual, but the developers are working tirelessly to find new ways to get around this issue in order to make Nike botting profitable again. With all of that being said, the BNB team has had a long history of being able to successfully adapt to Nike's efforts to stop bots, which is why BNB is considered by many to be industry leaders when it comes to Nike botting. Given their track record, this leads me to believe that this is only a temporary obstacle and that BNB developers will be able to find a reliable solution. As to when will that happen, I really don't know. But as I mentioned earlier, there are instances where entry filtering is turned off, so taking Ws isn't impossible. Depending on when you watch this video, there's a chance that BNB has already figured all of this out, and everything that I just said is outdated and irrelevant. If you're watching this video several weeks from the upload date and you want to know whether or not this bot actually works, I suggest you look at the most recent Nike sneakers releases and compare it to the success posts that BNB showcases on their Twitter. Either that or consult with your cook group. If you don't have a group yet, you can check out AK Chefs, one of the groups that I personally use. They're sold out right now, but you can follow them on Twitter to get updates on when they will restock their memberships. Their BNB support staff member is the one that helped me with some of the information for this video, so shout out to AK Chefs. With that being said, if you are interested in purchasing this bot, you can get it directly from the BNB website for $50 off. With the discount, this will make the bot $150 to initially purchase it, then after 6 months, it's $60 for every six months to renew your license. Anyways, the way the bot works has changed a little bit since my last tutorial, so if you have the bot already and you want to keep running it, we will go over that in this video. Before we get into it, I want to address some frequently asked questions. Number one, does this bot work for my region? These are the regions that they support, according to their website. But Canada uses a different entry method for their sneakers app, from what I've been told. Another question that I get all the time is, do I have to keep buying Nike sneakers account every release? No, you don't have to keep buying the accounts after every release. Buy as many as you want and then you can keep using them over and over again until they get unverified. Nike does mass unverify accounts sometimes, so I would personally use account providers that offer warranty periods. So that if your accounts do get unverified, you have your accounts replaced free of cost or have your accounts replaced at a highly discounted rate. The Nike account providers that sponsor my content do offer accounts with warranty. Authentic accounts basically have lifetime warranty for their accounts, which is why they charge a premium. But considering the lifetime warranty, I'd imagine that you'd save more money in the long run 
if you do decide to purchase from them. Schwett, on the other hand, offers 45-day warranty for their extended warranty accounts, but you also have the option of purchasing accounts without any warranty at all for a highly discounted price. The links to purchase from either of these providers will be in the description, and you can use my discount code BOTTERBOYNOVA for further savings. Third frequently asked question, should your proxy location match the region of your sneakers app? Yes, you want to try to do that. Here are the proxy providers that I personally use and yes, they sponsor me as well. I find these to be very reliable and I've had decent success using these on not just Nike but for other online retailers as well. But with Leaf proxies in particular, they offer proxies for tons of regions. If you purchase a residential proxy plan, no matter where you're from, you will have access to get proxies from all of these regions. Speaking of proxies, another question I get is how much data should I buy when running for sneakers? This varies from person to person, so consult with your group, but I would recommend that you just start off with a 2GB data plan to see how much data you use after one release, and if you start to run out, just buy some more data. I also have questions regarding billing profiles whether or not they have to be different per entry. Yes, I would recommend to get as many different billing and shipping addresses as possible to make as many unique entries as possible, but long story short, I don't have the answer to this question. I've personally found success with a really bad 1 to 15 billing to account ratio, but maybe I could have had more success with a different ratio. It's really hard to say, but I don't think there is a definitive answer for this one, but consult with your cook group for other recommendations. The last frequently asked question that I get is if there are any other sneaker bots. There are a few new ones that have been popping up recently, but when it comes to historical success, the other sneaker bot that is widely used is Ghost, which is more difficult to purchase than BNB and more expensive if you decide to pay resale price, but I don't believe it performs necessarily any better than BNB. It is a prettier bot though, I have to say. Anyways, when you first open BNB, you notice three Chrome browsers pop up. These are called Chrome helpers. The BNB team doesn't exactly give us too much information as to what these do, but you do need to keep these open and I speculate this is used to try and bypass the bot entry filtering. Make sure that you have your accounts and billing profiles imported into your bot with the correct details. The process for that hasn't changed. You don't have to do this anymore if you've already done it, but if you do still have to do it, refer to part 1 of the tutorial. Before drop, you're going to need cookies for you to successfully log into your accounts and submit entries. What are cookies you may ask? Well, think about it like this. Suppose you want to walk through a guarded door. The guard will say you cannot go through this door without giving me a cookie. Then you find out, to get a cookie, you need to do a little dance. Every time you do this dance, you are rewarded one cookie. You give the cookie to the guard, and he lets you through the first door, which is your Nike account logging in. Without this cookie, you wouldn't have been able to do this, and you would just get a bunch of errors on your bot. After you go through the first door, you then have one more door to go through. But there is another guard who also wants a cookie. So you do your dance, you get a cookie, and you give the cookie to the guard. And then he lets you through. After he lets you through, you've successfully made one entry using your bot. You need cookies to log in, and you need cookies to submit your entry. Without cookies, you won't be able to do either of these. It's recommended that you have at least two cookies per account that you are running. But I would personally do more than two cookies per account just to make sure. So how do you get cookies in the bot? You go to Tools, Cookie Generation, Launch Chrome, and it will start doing its dance. And boom, now you have cookies. I would recommend for you to use proxies while you are generating cookies. Data center proxies in particular. Because one, data centers are faster, so you can generate cookies faster. And two, they won't use up data from your residential plan, so you can save the data for more drops. Just make sure that the proxies match up with your region and that they actually work on sneakers. So before buying any data center proxies, make sure that the provider specifies which websites they work on. However, if you're having trouble finding data centers for your region or data centers that work, or you just don't want to buy any data centers to begin with, residential proxies should work as well. Just note that it would count towards your data usage, so you want to be careful with how you generate cookies with residential proxies. So the proxies that you want to 
use for the cookie generator, you put it in here. If you leave this blank, it will use the proxies that you have under the add slash edit proxies section. Cookie buffer is the maximum amount of cookies that you want the generators to make before stopping. So mine is set to 300. That means when my available cookies hit 300, the cookie generators will close by itself. Max Chrome instances is the number of maximum amount of cookie generators you want to run all at once. This will depend on how many accounts you're running. The more generators you run, then the faster you will generate cookies. But you don't want to run more than you have to. I personally run 3 and I use 150 accounts. The BNB team said that cookies can last up to 5 days. So cookie generation is something that you might want to do maybe 1-3 to three days in advance before the release just to make sure that you are ready to go during drop time. From my experience, sometimes my cookies disappear before that so you don't want to do it too far in advance. Oh, and if you close your bot, you lose your cookies. So if you are preparing way in advance, then you do want to keep your bot open. All right, so that wraps it up for cookies. A few hours before the release, it's recommended that you check your accounts through the bot's account checker. So you don't end up wasting data and cookies trying to log into that account. If you do have unverified accounts, just remove it from your account list. If you don't have any unverified accounts, then you should be good to go. My advice is do not test your accounts more than once per drop because testing your accounts over and over and over and over it's speculated that this is one of the main contributors towards getting your accounts banned. So don't abuse the account checker. So you've tested your accounts and you have your cookies. One to two hours before the drop, press start and your accounts will log in and find the release that you've specified in the style code column. Once it's found, it will say waiting for product. At this point, your number of cookies will go down because you've used them to get through the first door which is the login phase. If you don't have enough cookies after this point, you can generate more if you need to, to ensure that you don't have any issues submitting your entries. Once the drop goes live, your accounts will submit their entries. And the last thing to do is wait to see if any of these entries end up getting a W. That about wraps it up. If I was able to help out, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel where I post all sorts of botting and sneaker related content. And also consider supporting me on my Instagram and Twitter. If you have any other questions regarding BNB, comment down below and I will try my best to get back to you. In the meantime, if you want to watch other botting, reselling, and sneaker related content, check out my YouTube channel. I vlogged my entire reselling journey and I'll see you there.